On today's ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show, Lower Thirds, Corel, Long Cables, and Pro 5 Bible Templates. Hi, and welcome again to another episode of the ChurchTechCast.com Q&A show. This is the show where every week I answer your church tech questions. My name is Paul Allen Clifford. I'm your host, and I'd love for you to ask your question, so just do that below the video. If you're listening to the audio, just head over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash ctcqa, church tech cast, question and answers, ctcqa, and just leave your question under any of those videos. That's cool as well. So I got plenty of uh, questions here, so let's dive into those. First, uh, Juliet Ellis via email said, Paul, my name is Juliet Ellis. I'm the AV Communications Director for my church, Linden SDA Church. I need help in creating lower thirds. My pastor has been asking me to make this happen for a while now. We what we have is ProPresenter 5, and I'm using a Blackmagic ATEM 1. Can you help me, please? Thanks. Okay, so what I did was I clarified some details with uh, Juliet, and here is what's going on. Uh, first off, the uh, Blackmagic Television Studio, and I believe the uh, single ME version not sure about the 2ME, that might be might be the case as well, but none of those have alpha channels from an external device. So in talking to her, she wanted some transparency. So we got to get creative. Here's what I would do. Um, I think that uh, per, uh, the Blackmagic switchers take either a TIFF or a Targa file. I can't remember which, might be both. And those would provide the transparency she wants. So she wants scriptures, hymns, and nameplates. So for the nameplates, your pastor is going to be the same week in, week out. Typically, you're going to have uh, just a core group of people that are on uh, stage, they're on the podium, uh, the platform, whatever you call it at your church. You're going to have only a few of those. So I would make those in Photoshop. Export them with the transparency you want, but also export a blank one, and I'll tell you why. So the next thing I would do is I would, basically what we're going to do is we're going to layer, bottom layer camera, next layer uh, a downstream key with the background on it, and the topmost layer we want to put the lyrics from ProPresenter or the scripture or whatever. So how we're going to do that is we're going to send that with either a chroma key green background and key that out with the switcher or with a black background and also key that out. Chroma key, green, uh, typically it could be blue, also could be magenta. Um, any one of those three you can usually key out with your switcher. You can also do what's called a luma or luminance key and key out the black, leaving the white. I typically would start with the chroma key and see if you can pull a good tight key off that, because then you can have an outline with the text and that'll separate from the background of your lower third. So that's what I would do in that case. Now, this next one isn't really a question, but it's a response, because this show is interactive. I asked a couple of weeks ago, since I'm not primarily a PC guy, and what I was going to recommend was by Adobe, and they quit making it, because, well, anyway, it was a question on using DVD authoring software on a Windows machine, but we're in 2015, and DVD authoring is getting harder and harder to come by. So, Tom Willis answered that question, uh, saying that 
he uses Corel Video Studio Pro. This is not top of the line video production, but it is what I can afford under $100, and it is one I found that worked for me. So thanks, Tom. Anyone else that has a recommendation on the Windows side for DVD authoring? The question was not about the Mac, because he doesn't have a Mac, because I could suggest some stuff to him, but on the Windows side. So go right ahead and write those in under the video or at trendydigitalmedia.com slash ctcqa. Okay, Brian McDevitt via email said, Hey Paul, I watched a few of your videos on YouTube. Thanks. I don't know if you can help me but or not, but here goes. We ha have been uh, running an old computer that was given to us in our youth room for media during worship and for sermon notes. We have two 60-inch TV screens that are about 40 to 45 feet from the media sound booth. To get video from the old computer, we used S-Video out to an RF modulator box to coax cable. The coax went to the TVs. We were using MediaShout. The computer died on Sunday, so I went ahead and bought a Mac Mini. The Mini has two Thunderbolt ports, one HDMI, three USB. The TVs have two HDMI, one DVI, one RCA, and one component. Both TVs are identical. Now, I have to figure out how to get the signal from my Mac Mini to the TVs. We also switch to ProPresenter 6. I have little idea what I'm doing. So in clarifying with Brian, it turned out that he did not have DVI, he had VGA. So five years ago, here's the answer. We would go Thunderbolt into a uh, VGA cable because Thunderbolt is also mini display port. So that's just an adapter. It's like six or seven dollars, very inexpensive. 15 if you buy it from Best Buy. Uh, six or seven if you get it from uh, mono price. But anyway, you do that, you run VGA cable, uh, have a VGA DA, split that out, you're golden. This is 2015 though, and I'm really hesitant to recommend VGA cable nowadays. So if it was me, this is what I would do. I would come out HDMI, I would convert the HDMI to SDI serial digital interface, and I would run that on my coax. Assuming it's RG6, uh, RG59 probably isn't good enough, but as long as it's RG6, you should be able to get it that distance no problem at all. And then convert it back to HDMI, and you'll be fine. Now, in doing that, some people are going to say, well, I just run a Balin. I've heard a lot of people having troubles with those because HDMI. HDMI is the problem. So, um, and he already has coax. So he already has the cable in place, so that could save a little trouble. So I think that that's probably just a better solution for the future. I'd hate to recommend VGA only to have one of those conk out in three years and you can't find a replacement. So that's why I'm leaning that way, although I really like VGA. Okay, finally, M. Doran via email says, I am new to ProPresenter 5. I've watched most of your tutorials. I would like to change where the verse reference is placed on the slides. I've tried to build a template without any luck. Can you help me? So this past week, I did a uh, Bibles 2.0 Part 2 in uh, for ProPresenter where you can actually uh, take the Bible verses from the Bible app in ProPresenter, put that into a song. Once you do that, you can edit everything. That's the best way I've uh, found to do it. Seems like the verse it's 12 uh, notation there is actually problematic um, in that uh, it's it's all the same. So if you change just the verse notation, it sometimes changes the Bible verses. So I do it that way. It's less than ideal, but it, it works. So. so I hope that answered your questions. If you have uh, any more questions, don't forget to leave them. 
uh, below the video. If you like this content, you'd probably like my email newsletter, so head on over to trinitydigitalmedia.com slash gifts and pick that up. And uh, head over to my store, trinitydigitalmedia.com slash store, where you can pick up a subscription to my new community, Church Tech U, where you can get all my training included in your subscription. And we're building a community there so that we can, you know, do what the Bible says, iron sharpens iron, and just become better as church techies and creatives. Till next time, this is Paul Allen Clifford with trinitydigitalmedia.com. Go out and change eternity.